3.3 is graphing linear functions. So first we've got to know what a linear function is. A linear function linear line. So when graphed graph would always look like a line when you sketch a linear function. We'd already seen a linear function before um, since, since I started lecture today or earlier, the linear function came time and time again. So I'm going to go back to the exact same example and show that the linear function is what we've seen before. Um, So let's consider y is equal to x plus two. y equals x plus two is actually a linear function. And we can verify this if we go back to what we did. That is the graph of y equals x plus two. That looked like a line. Well, that looks like a line. And we also did that using the calculator and it looked like a line as well. So And that is the uh, function that we had. We put that function in. Let's see if this works. Does it? So y equals x plus two and graph, I get a line. So y equals x plus two um, is a linear function. Now, if we go back to the equation, which is a function, it is going to be one to one. In other words, for one x value, we're going to have exactly one y value. I could write this form now. This has a name later on. We'll talk about this um, in the sections ahead. So I can write uh, a general form of a linear function. And then there is called the standard form and standard form, general form, they kind of go back and forth. But um, when I do an example, I'll show you the difference. Here we have two letters, M and B. M is called the slope. B is the y-intercept. And the x values are the values that we're going to throw in and find the corresponding y values. But m and b are constants. So in our example, we could write um, y equals x plus 2 as y equals 1 times x plus two. And if I compare that to y equals mx plus b, I will quickly recognize that m is one and b is two. So the value of m is one, the value of b is two. So we have both a uh, value of M, um, the value of B. So we have the slope, we have the intercept. And we know how to graph this also.
So if we change the value of this slope, from simply x, which means one times x. I wrote it as four x plus two. So I'm going from one to four. When I graph it, that's the first line. Oh, sorry, I need two of them. So, so y equals x plus two. And the second one is four x plus two. So that is the first one, and that's the second one. You can see the second one is tilting and it's getting closer and closer to the y-axis. Um, if I picked a number less than one, let's say I picked 0.4 x plus two, and it's going to go below the um, line and it's going to get closer and closer to the y-axis. Um, so M gives us a lot of information about the line. So if M is positive, the linear function is increasing in the sense if x increases, y increases as well. If m is negative, the linear function is decreasing in the sense if x is increasing, y will decrease. So let's go back to the calculator. So, y equals negative x plus two, and I graph this, it's going down. Last time it was going up, now it's going down. Going to change it to negative four x plus two. It's still going down and it gets closer to the x-axis. So you know, M is negative form. We're only looking at the mag absolute value of the slope, not with the negative sign. So the absolute value four of negative four is four, and it's definitely bigger than one. So it's gonna get closer to the x-axis. And lastly, if I put negative 0.4 x plus two, that's going to go below and it's still decreasing. So as the value of x increases, the value of y would decrease. So I could quickly show you this using a table. So y equals x plus two and second graph. So when zero, I get two, one, I get three, two, I get four. So as X is increasing, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, Y is also increasing, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So M is positive and the linear function is increasing. Now, if I change X to negative X, it has to decrease in the sense, if X increases, Y has to decrease. Press second graph. So zero, I get two, one, I get one, two, I get zero, three minus one, four minus two, 
five minus three, and it keeps on going. Now you've got to keep in mind negative four is less than negative three because it, those are negative numbers. Those are not positive numbers. So as X increases, Y decreases. So the, the linear function is decreasing because the slope is negative. We looked at M being positive, M being negative, but then, you know, what if M is zero? If M is zero, linear function is constant in the sense it has no slope at all. Think of it this way. If you have a ladder and you lean it against the wall, then it is sloping. But if you take the same ladder and put it on the ground, make it lay flat, there is no slope to that ladder. So that it has no slope, which means m is zero. We have talked about M all this time and we've left B to be alone. So what about B? B is the Y intercept. Intercept means get in the way or cross something. So So Y intercept is the point on y-axis where I write in a different way is the point where the linear function crosses the y-axis. So wherever it crosses the y-axis would be uh, the linear function. In our case, we have y equals x plus two, and we wrote already that b is two. So the function is going to cross the y-axis at b is equal to two. Let's see if that is true. Let's go back to our graph. And we'll do y equals x plus two. And that's what we get. And you can see it's crossing the y-axis at one point. And we know that point um, to be two. Now, how do we find this using the calculator? Simply press trace. When you press trace, it gives you in the bottom of the screen that X is zero and Y is two. So X zero, Y equals two would mean that the point would lie on the Y axis. So the function is actually crossing the x axis, excuse me, y axis exactly at two, and it keeps on going up. So, how do we find um, the intercept? Well, if a point lies on the y axis, x has to be zero. That's something we talked about earlier. So, To solve for the y-intercept, we set x is equal to zero and we solve for b. And finding 
the y intercept is always easy, especially if we have something like this. But if we have a complicated function, perhaps it might be a bit difficult. But if I'm going to set x is equal to zero, y equals x plus two, um, set x equals zero, I have y equals zero plus two, which is two, and that is the y in set B, which is equal to two. Just like how we found the x intercept, excuse me, y intercept, the point where uh, the line crosses the y axis, we can find the point where the line crosses the x axis. So x intercept And we know that if a point lies on the y x axis, y has to be zero. So, so how do we solve for um, the x intercept set y is equal to zero and you solve for b? So in our case, we have y equals x plus two. And if I set y equals zero, I get x plus two equals zero, which would imply x is equal to negative two. So that would be our x intercept. And Let's see if the calculator gives us the same answer. So I'm going to use the arrows to move that cursor down. And that is our y-intercept. And I get close and it gives me a value of x equals negative 1.914 and y equals 0 0.085. Now, a calculator is not going to give you an exact answer if you use trace. There are other methods to get an exact answer, but now is not the time to talk about them. So if you want to verify the answer, whatever the calculator gives you has to be very close to what you found manually. So here, x is negative 1.91, um, y is 0 0.085. If y is 0 0.085, it is close to zero. Um, x is equal to negative 1.914, that is close to negative two. So finding the y-intercept um, is better using um, manual calculations, but it takes a little bit of extra work. So let us consider negative x plus one half y equals five. The first question is, is the given equation a linear function? I said a linear function has to look like y equals mx plus b. Well, the given equation doesn't look anything like that, but this is tricky. All I have to do is to rewrite y in terms of x. Keep in mind, if we want to come up with a function, y has to be in terms of x. So all we need to have on the left-hand side is y. All of the terms have to go to the right-hand side. So I have negative two plus one half, sorry, it's negative x plus one half y equals positive five. Um, I'm going to move the x to the other side. So one half y would equal to five plus x. As I mentioned, 
I simply need to have y on the left hand side. We've got to move everything else to the right hand side. So multiply by two on both sides. So two times one half y equals two times five plus x. The two will get canceled. So y is equal to 10 plus two x. This is the same as saying y equals two x plus 10. And that certainly looks like a line because that matches y equals mx plus b. So m is two and b is 10. So the answer to part A is yes. Answer to part B is M equals two. Answer to part C is 10. And we know since the slope is positive, so the function has to be increasing. Lastly, we've got to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, the very first step is to set y equals zero. We set y equals zero, and we are going to solve for x. If we set y equals zero, zero would be equal to 10 plus two x. If I move the 10 to the other side, minus 10 would be equal to two x. We are solving for x, so we've got to divide both sides by two. So negative 10 over two equals two x over two. So negative 10 over two is negative five. 2 over 2 will get cancelled. So the x intercept is negative 5. I'm going to show you the graph um, of this function. But when you graph, we have to graph the final um, expression that we had, the simplified version y equals 10 plus 2x or 2x plus 10 doesn't matter. So so y equals 2x plus 10 and when I graph this That is the graph I'm getting. It seems like it's getting cut off on the top side. So I'm going to adjust my window. Um, the y-axis is from negative 10 to positive 10. Um, and we know the y-intercept is 10. So I'm going to adjust the window and increase that value to 15. Now I would know it's crossing the x axis, excuse me, y axis exactly at 10. So if I hit trace, it goes directly to the y intercept. Y intercept is 0, comma 10. That is the point. It, the line is increasing as expected. Now we want to find the x intercept. The graph seems like it is going through negative 5, but I can do the trace button, get closer and closer and closer. 
to that intersecting point. And you can see the X value is negative 4.89 and the positive Y value is 0.212. Once again, the calculator will not give you the exact answer when you try to trace. It'll get you closer to the correct answer. Um, so is negative 0.489 close to negative five? Absolutely. And 0.212 is close to zero. So our answer is correct. Here we have y equals x over four plus three over five. By the looks of it, you may say that is not a linear function, but in, in fact, it is a linear function. But how? Well, I could write y equals x over four plus three over five as one over four times x plus three over five. X times, x times one is simply x. Denominator of x is one, one times four is four. Now that looks like y equals mx plus b. This would mean slope m is one over four. Y intercept b is equal to three over five. X intercept is the tricky one. So how do we find the X intercept? We set Y equals zero. And solve for X. So zero would be equal to one over four times X plus three over five. Move the three over five from right hand side to left hand side. The positive would become negative. Negative three over five equals one over four times X. We would like to get rid of the four in the denominator. So we multiply both sides by four. And what happens to the four? The fours would go away. Negative three times four is negative 12 divided by five. Of course it is a fraction, but as a decimal, this would be negative 2.4. So that is the x intercept. Let's see if we get this value using the calculator. So you've got to be careful anytime you have denominator function, excuse me, denominators, fractions, and all of that uh, while graphing. Um, if you don't do it properly, you're going to end up with uh, the wrong answer. So we have one over four x, plus three over five. So clearly um, the line is increasing because the slope is positive. And I could write three over five as 0.6. The graph is going to give you a decimal value or the calculator. So I'm going to change y equals since we have one over four, always good to use parentheses. So one over four X plus three over five. And now graph. That's what you get. The line seems very close to the X axis, not so pretty. So I'm going to adjust this a bit. Um, let's set the window uh, from negative 10 to 10. That's not an issue. Um, we'll change that to negative five or negative three to positive three. That seems 
something that we can work with. So I'm going to hit trace and it'll go directly to the Y intercept and it goes to 0.6 and that was the Y intercept that I wrote. So B is 0.6. The calculator will always give you the accurate value of the y-intercept, but it is only going to give you an approximated value for the x-intercept. As I mentioned earlier, there are ways to find the exact value, but now is not the time for us to get into it because you're still at the beginning stages of algebra. So, I want to know where the line crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to move the cursor closer and closer to the x-axis. And that seems like a good value to stop. Now, it's always best to pick a y value that is very close to zero. Now I could have stopped there, that's that negative, excuse me, that y value is at 0 0.06. If I move a little, I get 0 0.01. 0 0.01 is closer to zero than 0 0.06. So whatever value of x I get now is going to be more accurate than the previous value. And if I look at the x value, it turns out to be negative 2.34. And negative 2.34, is very close to negative 2.4. So the answer we have is in fact correct.